Yes, this is not Genshin Impact. Hello everyone and welcome back into another video. Today we're having a look at Tower of Fantasy. Uh, this is a game that I've been playing for a couple of months now. It released this year, around summer it was. And it's supposed to be an MMORPG with gacha elements. I just wanted to share my thoughts uh, after well playing this game long enough to basically being a uh, max level, as you can see I'm level 32, out of 72, so that's basically maxed out. My CS is uh, quite high, I have basically done all the content there is in the game, so yeah, it's about time to talk about the game. First things first, um, is this gonna be the Genshin Impact Killer? Um, no, these are two different games. Uh, this one is, uh, as I said before, it's an MMO. It only has the Gacha element uh, in common with Genshin, and everything else is basically different. As you can see, I'm currently in a city and there's already another player. That's not on my team, and one on another over here. So yeah, the world is quite alive. There's a lot of players playing, actually. It has its own unique style, that's for sure. The game plays really well. Uh, yeah, I'm currently playing at 120 FPS, which is the maximum amount you can play. It is also available on mobile devices, so you can play this game over there as well. The world is completely different, the map is completely different, the enemies are uh, different, of course. In this game, you also can create your own character and customize it uh, however you want. You can go over here into your outfit and add any of these outfits that you get uh, by exploring the map or by completing some events or even buying like some of them like there's some that you can get only by buying also from leveling up or from battle pass so many many options you can customize basically everything on your character and you can keep customizing them even after you completed your your uh, customization the first time. If you do choose to change something on your appearance, it would cost you one of these tickets, the Beauty Beauty Voucher. But as you can see, I have 20 and like you get a bunch of them from doing a uh, mechanic here in this map. You basically go around, collect tokens, and then use them to pull on this, um, these machines over here. And you have a chance to get those vouchers, but uh, yeah, you can also customize your character. And whenever you get a five star, you can also equip their appearance to your character. For example, I can keep this one. And if you get a uh, constellation three character, you can also get like the special skin. Um, yeah, that's like a lot of customization if you want that. For now, I'm gonna keep using her because she looks amazing. The gacha itself is completely different. Uh, here you can actually buy five star weapons uh, from the shop. This is the uh, gacha page. Here you can pull for weapons. These are the normal pulls, the yellow ones. And there's also the purple ones that are uh, without any kind of PT or system like that. While the yellow ones actually have PT system, you do get five star weapons from here as well this uh, is what you can call like the standard banner in Genshin Impact and these are the weapons the five star weapons you can get and after you get at least one copy of a weapon you can afterward buy it for this point the black gold uh, you get black gold uh, you get one black gold per pull and you also get a bonus one if you get a four star and even more if you get a five star so it's kind of easy and yeah four stars are SR and five star are SSR so there's that difference if you want to consider that a difference. The PT system also works in a kind of unique way where basically if you get an SSR before the PT it will not reset your uh, counter here for example it will not go uh, back to zero like in Genshin Impact does uh, it will start climbing up until you get to 80 so you can get a five star at 10 pool, a five star at 30 pulls at 5 star at 70 pulls and then another one at 80 pulls for example so it will not reset your pity for example even in the um, in the rate up banner you can reach like 70 pulls out of 80 and then wait for the banner you, you want and the fact that you only have the 50% chance without any guaranteed uh, it's kind of countered by this fact that basically it doesn't reset your pity so uh, yeah, there is that. And you only have to pull for the weapon, not the character. Uh, but there are matrices, which we can call them artifacts in Genshin Impact. Uh, they do act almost the same. They basically work like artifacts, like there's a two-piece set, there's a four-piece set on the SSR matrices, and the SR matrices have a three-piece set, and there's also blue ones, which are not that worth using unless you're just starting out, which also have a three-piece set. Each character has its own unique set, Usually the two-piece set does work for a lot of characters, while the four-piece set has like a nice bonus for some specific characters. For example, uh, this set over here has 
the 4 piece set that only works for this character so there is that to consider and the game itself has also mounts as you can see this guy is running on a mount i also have mine over here which is a well it's a it's a big bird there are many many weapons to choose from the standard ones are uh, very powerful actually you can build a team with normal ones and have a very very good team yeah? and there are also the new weapons that they are adding where you get a bonus which is the elemental resonance and this will buff your for example in this case this weapon is a frost weapon and it will have an elemental resonance that buffs frost damage in this case that also applies for vault damage which is electricity and also flame damage which is fire and does also work for physical damage so that's basically that you can only get these weapons from the rate up banners which in this case are currently this one which is the character i'm currently using and this one which has this adorable little character the banners do last almost the same amount uh, of time as the genshi ones uh, the only difference is that here there is no guaranteed pity you only have a 50 percent chance to get the character there are a bunch of uh, rewards you can redeem by setting out like some free rate up polls and a bunch of like login events and stuff where you get even more polls. They recently added the desert map, which is this one, which is huge. There's like, there's no easy way to describe how huge this map really is. There's like underground caves and stuff you can explore. And there are many, many polls to get. For example, uh, I think from this map you get around 350 of the purple polls or something and around 90 to 100 of the yellow ones, uh, which are the ones used for, as I said before, the standard banner. You also have Dark Crystal, which is a currency you get from basically doing stuff in your crew. You also get a lot by completing achievements and stuff like that. While from dailies you will get a yellow pole and three purple ones uh, while also getting a bunch of other stuff. So there are multiple ways to get those Dark Crystals even for free to place. One thing that this game has that Genshin doesn't is endgame, because uh, this game has a lot, and I mean a lot to do, for endgame players. Uh, for example, you can of course farm for your gear, in this case you can farm matrixes, or your equipment. The equipment are some pieces that you get from uh, some specific uh, dungeons and stuff. You do get a lot whenever you reach, I think, level 60, you will start to get a lot of them. You level them up using this currency. You can also advance the star level by using these crystals or using the equipment. If, for example, I want to upgrade these handguards and I do have a bunch of them over here, for example, like this, you can see the handguards over there. So yeah, there is a lot, a lot of farming you can do. And as I was saying, there is a lot of endgame. Uh, the Bygone Phantasm is one of them. This is uh, basically an abyss, but with many, many floors. And you do get, uh, as you can see over here, a bunch of Dark Crystal, uh, which is the currency used to get pulls in the game. There are rewards up to level 350 of the Bygone Phantasm, and there are probably more if you go even further, but it's super hard and that's where you have to start building your team the correct way and increasing your level and stuff like that. There is also PvP if you're into that. It's not that played, like not a lot of players do play it, uh, but you do get a bunch of stuff from even just joining a bunch of times. You will get, for example, 100 Dark Crystals every uh, few weeks, I think it is. There are Void Rifts, where you have to fight a special boss after it gets you some buffs. There are Wormholes, where you have to challenge a bunch of floors, and every four floors there's a boss, which uh, is resistant to a bunch of elements or has some weaknesses uh, to some elements. It's quite fun, so you can vary your builds uh, many many times. There's the Frontier Clash where you have to challenge uh, only bosses. Uh, there are like multiple bosses you have to fight in a row and the more bosses you kill the more rewards you get. There are normal and hard modes for basically everything and of course we have raids. Uh, raids are some very cool bosses that you can uh, do in their normal mode or on hero mode to get other uh, rewards. You can get up to three rewards per week and that means you can do all these three bosses over here currently but uh, yeah it's Quite fun, these bosses have cool mechanics, and this is an 8 player content, so it's not for team. You join other 7 players to fight these bosses, and it's actually quite challenging and a lot of fun. If you love exploration, as you can see the graphics are amazing, this is the, the new city they added, and it looks very very good. There's a bunch of things you can do, uh, like minigames and stuff all over the world, so you will not get tired 
of exploring. I, I, I cannot stress that enough. There's so much to explore in this game. The combat system is a lot of fun. You can equip up to three weapons. You can unlock the third slot after leveling up a little bit. Uh, the Forza weapons are actually quite good. For example, this is the basically the starting weapon you get as a Forza weapon. You will get enough copies to uh, increase the star level up to six quite easily on all the Forza weapons, while the five stars, of course, are going to be a little bit more difficult to get. But yeah, the Forza weapons usually have a very good passive talent in those constellations, let's call them. And whenever you get to that constellation, uh, you can use those Forza weapons even with your 5-star weapons, because they are that good. Uh, the animations are quite flashy, for example, this one reminds me of Kaching, I don't know why, but it's super cool. The weapons also look like completely oversized and amazing. And yeah, all the animations are very, very good to look at. There are basic ones like this one, uh, but all of them have their like cool stuff. Okay, what are my final thoughts on the game then? Um, the game is a lot of fun. The combat is very, very flashy and, and it's actually quite hard against some specific bosses or even some end game enemies. So you will have a lot of challenge uh, if you, well, want that. Or you can just explore around because the map is huge and it's very cool to look at. It's very pretty. You can go around, find some uh, some pools, find some other stuff you may want. You can also take photos if you're into that. Uh, the camera mode is, is fine. It's nothing crazy, but yeah, you can do cool stuff with that. And yeah, do I suggest the game? Um, yeah, it's free to play. You can give it a try. It's not like they're gonna charge you for that and see what you think about it. The story is there. Like There is a story you can follow if you're into that. Uh, it's, not, it's not amazing, it's not as deep as Genshin lore, but I mean, the game is quite new, so uh, there is also that. The story is building up and stuff like that. I don't want to spoil anything, but if you're into story, it's it's a fine story, it's enjoyable. So yeah, download the game, give it a try. It's not sponsored, it's just my thoughts on the game. I hope you will have fun exploring here, or well, I'll see you guys in Genshin, I guess. And have a great rest of the day. See you in the next one. Bye bye. With frogs, cold night and the winter hot cold. Sorry that I fall away sometimes. Sorry that I fall away sometimes. Yeah, yeah. The end. Got to end it all on the weekend. Sorry that I feel that way sometimes. Sorry that I feel that way sometimes. Oh.